Anything can happen in the White Mountains. 15,000 feet of elevation gain. I would say it's one of my favorite loops, but I've never actually completed it. This is my third attempt. Will the curse of the Prescott Loop finally be lifted? I don't know, but we're gonna find out together. I'm gonna do something against my better judgment right now. Good morning, everyone. Syntax 77 here, and let me tell you what's currently going on. I'm right now standing in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, one of my favorite places in the world, and I'm about to do three days and two nights of some backpacking. I got my pack over there, which you just saw. It's about a nine-ish pound base weight, and uh, my camera gear there, not included in that, but I'm about to suit up and get on the trail. I put together a little loop, something I call the Prezacat loop. It's a pretty challenging loop. It's uh, roughly 30 miles, which isn't too bad for three days, but it is the White Mountains where they say, and I kind of agree, that every mile is worth two just about anywhere else. But more importantly, this loop has 15,000 feet of cumulative or total elevation gain. So it's gonna be a little bit of a butt kicker, but I'm pretty excited. I would say it's one of my favorite loops, but I've never actually completed it. I tried it two times before. This is my third attempt. And it puts together the presidential range on one side, the northern part of it, from Mount Washington to Jefferson, Adams, and Madison. And then on the other side of the loop, we have the Carter Range and the Wildcats. I'm actually at the Great Gulf Trailhead. So I'm gonna pop my backpack on, suit up, and get out there. The first time I came up here, well, both times I came up, I attempted to do it as a same three day, two night trip. First time was in 2013 by myself. Really went pretty well, but it got to the third day. It was about two or three in the afternoon. I had to be at work the next morning and it was a nine hour drive home. So it was just a timing issue. I ran out of time, didn't push myself hard enough, I guess. And I had to kind of cut off the Carter part of the trip and circumvent that to save time. There you go, this is our intersection with Carter Dome Trail. If we keep going up there, we'll get the remaining Carters and whatnot, but we're gonna save that for another trip. The second time was three years later in 2016. I came back with my friend TJ, and uh, well, on the very first day, I kind of fell on my face. <sighs> I just took a header. Seems that I'm getting more beautiful as the day goes on, so that's good. Yeah, that kind of put a damper on things. Still continued to hike for the full three days, but we kind of stuck to the presidentials and did a shorter, more relaxed loop over there. Now it's three years later again, it's 2019, and I'm gonna give it another shot. Will the curse of the Prescott Loop finally be lifted? I don't know, but we're gonna find out together. You and I, the viewer, you're coming with me, and we'll see what happens. Up here is Camp Dodge Road. Now last time, both other times I came, up there is Dolly Cap Campground. And that is a large RV and car camping lot. And we kind of based out of there on the Daniel Webster Trail. But by going that way, it added like two miles of road hike to the whole thing. What I've since discovered since then is that right here, up here, is the uh, Camp Dodge, run by the AMC, and from what I've read, there's a little cut through path, unofficial, I think it's an old logging road, that's gonna let us kinda jump on what's called the Imp Trail, which the trailhead for that is like a mile up there. But by doing this, I can kinda cut that off, and then at the end of the loop, I'll come right back to the Jeep. I don't know, we'll see if this works, if I can find this trail, and then once we hop on, we'll be good to go. Speaking of which, I'm also doing this in the opposite direction this time. It's really just to switch things up for myself. And personally, I think the Presidentials is kind of the crown jewel of this area and this hike. So that'll be kind of the carrot at the end of the stick to uh, keep me going. And we'll hit that up towards the end of the trip. We'll get into it tomorrow and then we'll get a bulk of it on the last day. Should be some good views. It was raining this morning. I was planning to start at like eight but I'm here at 10 o'clock because 
not gonna lie, I let the rain uh, blow out. Hopefully those two hours don't bite me in the butt, but we'll see. Today's about eight miles, so it's my lowest mileage day. It's right past the shed. And we are now getting into the woods, getting some more uphill. Nothing compared to what we're gonna get, of course. Speaking of which, when I brought up that 15,000 feet of elevation gain, what I'm talking about is not the highest point I'm going to. Around here, that's Mount Washington, it's only 6,200 feet. By that, I mean the total cumulative elevation gain. You know, you go up 1,000 feet, then down 200, then up 500. It'll add up to 15,000 feet. Pretty substantial, at least for me. I mean, to put it in perspective, the probably most popular loop hike around here is called the Pemi Loop. And that's the same 30 miles, but it's like 9,000 feet of elevation gain. Pretty strenuous. Or another one for those of you out there that you might know, the Maroon Bells in Colorado, the uh, Four Pass Loop. Very famous loop out there. That was 27 miles and like 8,000 feet of elevation gain. So it's about double, which is probably why <laughs> I ran out of time on that first attempt that I did because um, um, it, it just kicked my butt and I wasn't going fast enough, I guess. Or maybe I should have just woke up earlier on that last day, but we'll try to correct that this time. Yeah, it looks like we're right on it. And there's the real imp trail that we're going for. So good. But actually, as I stop, there's some yellow blazes there and yellow here. So I'm gonna bang right here. And this is the imp trail. Not too steep yet, but rocky. I think if the forecast holds, that's the end of the rain until I come out Thursday. Certainly working up a sweat already. We do seem to have a little bit of a obstacle course in our way here. Looks like a fairly recent blow down. Let's see, luckily it looks like we got a little pathway under here. Another advantage of a light pack is that it's a small pack. I think some of my earlier packs I used to carry that were like three times the weight might not have fit under there quite so easily. But, all right, so, whew, like I said, I'm heating up already. Luckily for me, it's uh, only 61 degrees. It is third week of July, should mention that. That's still a little bit cooler than normal, uh, according to the forecast I read from the observatory on Mount Washington. That's a bit unseasonably cool right now, but I'll take it. For sure. It's definitely slow going in here. I think we've picked up maybe a thousand feet of elevation gain, but it's been constant uphill. But the main thing is just the uh, trickiness of the rocks. Now, of course, this is really freshly rained on, so it slowed me down a little bit, but it's uh, 1130. Got 139 flights of stairs in there. Alrighty, the uh, parking lot was, I believe like 1300 feet or so. That's pretty much everything in the White Mountains starts between 12 and 1300 feet. So nowhere to go but up, that's for sure. Well, up to three miles now, up to elevation mark of 3000 feet. And I think we're getting a little break here. Some milder stuff instead of straight up. One thing they do not do in the White Mountains and most of the East, or at least the Northeast, is switchbacks. They just uh, like to throw you straight up it. So that's what we've been doing, but that's why when you get to a section like this, it really feels good. <laughs> Uh, until you turn around the corner and it starts going up. Although that's not too steep, so I'll take it. But we just got to get up to, I think the max we're going to go to today is uh, four and a half thousand feet or something like that. I forget what Carter Dome is, but something like that. So we still got maybe 1,500 to go, but that was a nice little area back there. Maybe we'll get some more boys. Wonder what's around the next corner. 
or perhaps what we have is an intersection around the corner. So this is our first intersection. We're gonna jump off of the Imp Trail here on the North Carter Trail going that way because we're ultimately gonna hit Carter Dome. So that's another five miles away. And then after that, we'll pretty much be, um, well, I'm gonna hit Mount Height as well, which actually has a better view, um, pretty astounding view apparently than uh, Carter Dome. Um, and then at that point, we're gonna start dropping down. And my plan is to camp around uh, it's called Carter Notch, and there's a shelter there, or a hut actually, but I'm going to go beyond that a bit and um, find somewhere to hang my hammock. I got a hammock with me, um, which is what's allowing me to keep my pack weight pretty low. I went with my minimal Dutchwear gear, a uh, little 10-ounce hammock, the Imp. So there's th this Imp trail, you could do a loop, and it would go over to Imp Face, which you can see from that Dolly Cop campground I was talking about down there. It's pretty cool, but... We won't be doing that. We'll be going towards Carter Dome and Mount Height. It's getting pretty tight in here. At least it has been. Hopefully I get a break soon. But everything's still wet, so I am starting to get soaked. But I'm avoiding putting on my rain suit because I'm also sweating profusely. Although, it's 55 now. It was down as low as I want to say 54 or 52. So <laughs> I've been heating up and sweating like crazy. And then when I stop, I start to freeze. <laughs> Not really freeze, but it's definitely chilly when you're wet and it's 50 degrees. Not much of a breeze. I don't think it's supposed to be too windy today, so that's helping. But I'm just going with the gamble that eventually I'll get in a wider terrain. This sun will come out more, hopefully. And uh, everything I'm wearing is synthetic and pretty lightweight. So based on prior experience, these pants and this shirt, uh, they do dry pretty quick. If I ever stopped subjecting them to uh, wet branches and stuff, but at least this is a little wider here. But you can see, it doesn't take much. These little areas that creep in here, rubbing up on me. <sighs> Looking forward to some sunshine to dry this stuff out for tomorrow, that's for sure. And what we got here? Basically walking in a stream right now. <sighs> but we're getting there. I think I'm a uh, half mile from my first uh, peak, Middle Carter Mountain. So... I think when I get there, maybe I'll just take a little break, drink some water, and uh, I'm not sure if Middle Carter has a view or not, but I guess we'll find out <sighs> if we can navigate our way through this stuff that is. We've officially linked up with the Appalachian Trail, which is simultaneously the Carter Mariah Trail. And we're going to be heading this way. I just came from there. And uh, we're heading towards Zeta Pass, which is, you know, a dip in between two mountains. So that's ahead in 2.7 miles. And then uh, I guess a couple miles beyond that or so, maybe a little less, Woo. as I get my footing here, will be. Um, Carter Notch and where we're camping hopefully I seem to be making okay time it's uh 1 30 now I'm getting pretty hungry but um you know I've been snacking trail mix and stuff like that I am looking forward to it. I usually do a at least on the first day uh some ramen noodle soup for lunch but I would really like to do that with a cool view so I've been putting it off but definitely looking forward to some good noodles soon. But we'll see. If, uh, if not on one of these carters, then uh, maybe on Mount Height. They'll all view in some soup, ideally, but... Oh, nice and mossy down there and muddy. But luckily we got some logs in there to help us along. Always nice. Try to navigate down this. Foothold there. 
Into the mud we go. Well, looks like I am gonna have a view for my noodles. Or at least it's opening up pretty good behind me there. And over here, cool. So, like I said before, I had to cut that trip short before and I was doing the opposite direction. So this is all stuff I've never done before. The closest I've come is Carter Dome ahead. I did hit years ago, like 2012 with my friend Mike, when we did a Wild River uh, kind of bow tie loop, figure eight loop. But this is cool, I've never been here. And it's also nice because for the rest of the trip, I'll still be going in the opposite direction. I don't think I've ever done the presidentials, which I've certainly been on before. I don't think I've ever done them in the direction I'm about to do. This is nice. I don't know if I'm going back down in the woods here and, and if I should set up my cook kit around here or not, but I'll poke around and uh, get a little food going. Let's see what we got here. Got my alcohol stove underneath there. That a viewer sent. Thank you very much for that. Um, it's kind of like a cat can stove, but it has a little insert and a wicking material in there. It seems to burn a little more efficiently. But unfortunately, I'm getting used to eyeballing the fuel, and I don't think I added quite enough because it burned out a little early. But actually, eh, the noodles look, they look done. Not quite as spongy as they usually get, but that'd be nice. A little al dente. So there's my soup. Take a seat with this. Have a little noodle snack. And uh, right over here, there's Mount Washington again in the distance. Looks like they're getting a little break in the clouds, but lots of them over there. A couple raindrops that I felt. I actually have my rain jacket on, not because of rain, but it's chilly up here. The temp is uh, still in the 50s. And with this wind and my wet shirt, uh, it was a little chilly. So that's uh, warming me up pretty good. <sighs> so actually the summit is over there. It's that cliffy kind of thing that we saw right across from me here. So I'm a little short of my first summit. I've actually got on this hike, nine of the New Hampshire 48s, which for another term, major peaks for this area. They're basically, it's a list of the 48 peaks in New Hampshire that are all over 4,000 feet with uh, over 200 feet of prominence, I believe. So basically major peaks. We got nine of those. This will be the first one, Middle Carter. And then I got seven, um, I guess you could call it subsidiary peaks or uh, minor peaks because they have less prominence, they might be, you know, just right off the shoulder of something, so. All of them, though, over 4,000 feet in elevation, which for around here is pretty decent, considering you usually start, like I said, at 1,200 feet, but, mm, a little broth to drink, too. One with a shrimp flavor. Good stuff, so. I'll warm up. I'm already a lot warmer with this on, I think, these uh, frog togs, they're only a few ounces for the pants and a few ounces for the jacket. Um, but they are breathable, they have a little mesh inside that kind of wicks away moisture. And then I guess it's like a one-way membrane. So, um, believe it or not, my wet shirt is pretty dry. So, I'll try out a little more, enjoy my soup, and uh, get back on this loop. That rhyme right there, pretty nice. Finally time to lose some elevation. First substantial downhill. It's been a couple small sections, but nothing like this. So that's the rest of today is some down and up and down and up. Rinse repeat as we go through the carters. The wildcats 
which are along this same kind of path, if you will. Um, they'll be tomorrow, so we'll do that first thing in the morning, pretty much. Reluctantly, I'm sure. Just watch the footing. See when we break out and get another view here. too much of a view on Washington now and you can barely kind of faintly make out that's the auto road that goes up there it is possible to drive up there and there's a visitor center up there and a meteorologist station um, so it's a bit of a shock when you get there but the good thing is I just might have a chili dog from the <laughs> from the snack shop tomorrow for lunch won't be quite as good as the cheeseburger I'm looking forward to after I get done this trip in its entirety, as is my tradition, but they do make a good chili dog. So I got that to propel me along, I suppose, as I go through these up and downs. See, we're back into the trees now. In fact, speaking of post-hike burgers, which I love so much, gotta give a huge thanks to viewer Dino from New Hampshire apparently a local around here he uh, heard me mention a couple times my favorite restaurant in these parts is Delaney's hole in the wall as it's called and uh, he sent me a gift card so thank you Dino for supplying me with my post hike burger for this trip super he didn't have to do that but it's super appreciated and uh, the other thing I failed to mention is it's gonna increase my odds hopefully of completing this trip if I don't get an injury like twisting my ankle just then is the fact that I am not rushing back home to immediately work the next morning this time. I'm going to um, grab a hotel, probably right across the street from Delaney's Hole in the Wall. And uh, I won't have to worry about that. So I should be able to push, theoretically, pretty late into the day, as late as I want, really, as long as Delaney's is still open <laughs> on, uh, on my third day. Which is nice. Ooh, I'll scramble and going back up, that's for sure. Sun is out. Love it. Backpack's drying out a little bit. Man, great views around here. Cool. All right, we are pretty much in the Zeta Pass or close to it. We dip down to 4,000 feet from 4,500. And that there is Mount Height. Now I could avoid it. There's a trail that goes around it and a trail that goes over top of it. But I'm doing pretty good on time. It's um. It's 3.46. Sunset's not until 8.20. So, I'm just going to go for it. I've read that it has good views. And uh, that's what I'm here to do. So, <laughs> whether or not I regret it or not when I go over it, I don't know. Because I'll have to... Uh, I'm not sure how far down I go. You can see I'm still losing elevation. I'll have to get back up to 4,500 feet. Then come down it. And then go up Carter Dome which there's no way getting around Carter Dome. We're going over that no matter what. So it's kind of adding another set of up and down, but I'm gonna go for it. I feel like I'm on the Autobahn cruising on these things. A lot better than going a mile per hour on that slippery, steep downhill. And even better are these planks. You can really roll across them. So I'm gonna Enjoy that until it's time to switch over to the uphill burn. <sighs> Not regretting my choice yet, but it is steep. <sighs> it is steep. Oh, we 
made it to the top of height. It was definitely steep. <sighs> Believe it or not, that hump there is what we came from. And then went down in there and up here. Sorry about the wind. Not much I can do about that. I also don't particularly like this system over here that's rolling. Eh, kind of parallel to me, kind of towards me. These guys over here too. It's not uh, ideal. Now I, I have a weather band radio I could break out. I'm not going to right now. Um, no cell service this whole time. So I have no way of updating. They originally said by two o'clock the threat of rain will pretty much be out of here, but anything can happen in the whites. That is for sure. Most notorious, or some of the most notorious weather in the world. Ah. Well, look at that. You ever see some lakes down there? All oh, those mountains. Pretty cool. And there's Washington just uh, <laughs> taunting us for tomorrow. Got to get up that guy. But right now, I gotta follow this path. Oh, it looks like I came off and I go around over here. All right. Don't want to step on any vegetation, so we'll backtrack over. Actually, might as well actually tag it here because I believe this is the highest thing around, so this must be the actual summit. And there's those 360 degree views. And ominous clouds. Now, we just gotta go down, dip in here a little bit, and back up on the Carter Dome there, which, even though it's taller, does not have as many views as here. Not nearly. So, all right, I'm gonna soak it in for a few more seconds and then see if I can't somehow get myself over there. It's always worse when you can see it. Well, I'll tell you what, compared to going straight up Mount Height, getting over here was actually relatively easy. And this is it, this is the summit. Now I have been here before on that trip I was talking about with Mike. In fact, I went past the junction for the trail to Wild River back there. But when we did it, it was raining and foggy. We didn't even realize that the only view, I remember that piece of metal. We didn't even realize the only view is actually right over here. We walked right by it because it was so socked in with fog. Well, let's see what it looks like. That back there, by the way, was the remnants of an old fire tower. That has since been torn down Ooh, years ago. <sighs> All right, well, we knocked this out. So, next up, 19 mile brook trail. That is not gonna take that trail, but near that junction, we're gonna probably go up it maybe a 10th or two tenths of a mile. Because of the uh, Carter Notch hut that's down here, uh, you can't camp within a quarter mile of that. Yeah, they make all the areas around the huts, the AMC huts, that is. They make it all forest protection areas, I guess, to keep people from camping right next to it and whatever. Or you could look at it the other way and say it's to make sure that people pay to stay in the hut instead. Anyway, I won't get into that. Um, I don't have like a hundred bucks to spend uh, that I want to spend. And I have a hammock that's comfortable, so I'm gonna hike out of that quarter mile radius and find myself a campsite somewhere around 19 mile brook trail. Oops, we're going over here. All right. Let the descent begin. Now, one downside that I'm looking at right now, I just thought of, I'm seeing a lot of presumably through hikers going the other direction. It's about 521. Um, by the time I get there, some of those campsites that I was eyeballing on the top of a map and from past experience might be taken. And around here, as you can see, it's pretty dense. So if you don't find a little precious flat spot on the top of a map, it can be a little tight. So 
see what I can do. I don't want to push into the Wildcats too much because I, I want to be near water so I can stock up tomorrow. There's nothing on the Wildcats until we get all the way over to the Presidentials and uh, Pinkham Notch Visitor Center and whatnot. So I want to camp by water. I'm not going to go any further tonight, but I got the hammock. I'll squeeze in somewhere, but that's the only unknown variable right now that's kind of going through my head as I have nothing else to really think about. In fact, over here, I do believe we can get a view down into what we're dropping into to camp at. Let's see. Oh, nice. Woo. Wow. Oh yeah. That is it. Oh man, this is almost dizzying. Look at that boulder field down there too. It's all falling off here over to Millennia and rolling downhill. There's Carter Notch. It's pretty cool cliffs. We have to go up that tomorrow, by the way. Try not to think about that right now because that is the Wildcats. And you can see all the up and downs mixed in there and then it curves around and drops down. And you can see the shoulder of Mount Washington right now. The top is obscured either by clouds or that, I forget. But there's the hut down there. So, you know, we're not talking about a lean-to. The hut system is, there's no electricity, but they have, um, I think, propane dropped in by, like, helicopter, at least for some of them. And they'll cook you a meal and everything. They got bunks in there. I guess it's maybe a dozen or more people can fit in there. And, um... About as close as you can get to a hotel in the middle of the middle of uh, nowhere, pretty much, or close to. The, it feels like the middle of nowhere. It's a couple miles to hike out of here for sure. Route 16 is on the other side there too. But yeah, we're gonna. I just came from there. We're gonna drop down. This is the final drop, and then over like in there, I believe, because that's the trail going up. It's hard to believe that we actually go up that, but we do. Somewhere down in there. Um, it's 19 mile brook trail kind of comes from over there and uh, In that area is hopefully where we'll find camp because I'm not going up that tonight But we'll see we'll see what's available When we get there after a little more careful footing careful footing, careful footing. Made it to the water is this not a beautiful area or what? All the lily pads and flowers coming up. There's some dragonflies flying around. The hut that we saw is down that ways, maybe eighth of a mile or so. Something like that. You can hear some voices echoing through. And yeah, we made it. And I'm glad to see water, not just because it's very pretty, but I am totally out. Um, I knocked out a liter and a half since I've been on the trail and prehydrated, of course. Um, just got a half liter that I keep up front and then my uh, full liter back there. They are empty. So now I'm going to make my way down here. You can see from the sign there, this is 19 Mile Brook Trail, Pinkham Notch. Uh, pardon me, uh, Wildcat Ridge this way. So, just gonna go scout around and uh, see if I can't find me somewhere to hang up this hang hammock. Definitely, uh, my legs are shot, so that took me longer than I thought to get down here. 626, so 26 minutes to descend that, but it was like straight down in most spots. It was pretty brutal. Pretty much, probably the equivalent of what we just did or what we we're gonna do tomorrow morning that I was pointing out. I guess tomorrow when we go up that we'll get to see what we came down today but yeah my legs are just done so time to find somewhere i can string up a hammock take a load off I'm starting to think about dinner too that is for sure well things are going a little different than ideally planned the uh there's two spots i expected the one somebody was in it although to be honest 
once I got here and saw and measured with my GPS, which I must have done this correctly at home, and according to the sign I saw, um, it's, uh, it's not a legal camp area anyway. The other spot was flat, top, uh, flat on the topo map, but in reality there was a bunch of crap there. It just wasn't, wasn't going to happen. So I came down 19 mile brook trail. I've been walking here, but it's downhill. So I'm going to have to go back up it in the morning. That's fine. But I keep going further and further. You can hear the water running, which is nice, but everything down there appears to be moss. But when you step on it, it's actually just water. So really not good conditions to uh, camp around here. <sighs> I am outside of the sign that says you can camp at this point, but just terrain wise, it's not really happening uh, at this point. I'm down to one hour, one minute till sunset. So it's going to be hard to find a spot around here, even in the light. So I definitely don't want to get caught in the dark, still looking for a site. So I'm going to poke around some more. Um, probably won't be I super ideal or whatnot, but um, yeah, jam in somewhere, I guess. All right, well, it's not the best setup I've ever had. I'm on some pretty crazy terrain, so I'm actually lucky to be set up at all. Shouldn't complain, glad I don't have a tent right now. It does, tents have their applications, but uh, I would be in trouble right now if all I had was a tent. And also, my trees I had to pick are about as close together as possible. I had to really wrap up my whoopee uh, slings uh, to get them tight enough. I'm just gonna take it for what it is. Put my quilts on here under quilt top quilt i uh, got 30 degree under 40 top got my uh jacket on you know it's funny i've been using the outdoor vitals adventure jacket which is synthetic and that's nice because it dries quicker and it still works when wet but i brought my mont bell that i've had to, since 2012 i think for nostalgia purposes because i was coming up to the whites and i just wanted to break it out again plus it saved me three ounces and uh, based on this terrain i'll take every ounce of savings i can get but ironically i had um my quilts in my hammock inside of a trash bag in my pack just in case and a lot of times i don't even do that but this time i said yeah i think i'm gonna do that and today i hiked a lot without the pack cover on there i really should have had it on because apparently all that moisture from those trees that were getting me on the trail um some of it got in the bag and uh it did get my down jacket a little bit wet but thankfully this does still have like a DWR coating on it and it wasn't super wet. So I think hopefully the loft still feels good and I'm just wearing it right now to dry it out. Basically, it's not terribly cold, but you know, we're down in the fifties, probably, probably get into the forties. So at this point, I'm just going to go before I lose complete light here. Um, I'm going to go use my Catadyne be free filter and fill up some water down in that, uh, in the brook over there, get that filled up and um, stock up and then I'm gonna cook some dinner but I'm losing light um, it's right around well, it's 8 17 so sunsets in three minutes you see I got my little mini flashlight here I got a headlamp as well but I like to carry this I carry this every day anyway in my pocket so I'm used to having it I'm gonna leave this on I've learned this from experience I'm gonna leave this on as a beacon when I go get water because by the time I try to come back um, I would not be able to find this place for sure. So I'll keep that light on so I know where I'm going and I'll probably take my GPS with me too, just in case uh, this is a fresh charge, but I don't know, just to be safe because if that light went out, I think I'd be stumbling around for a while trying to find this campsite. So I just got some old school mountain house meals that I picked up at Walmart and do some chili mac and beef, which I've done a thousand times before. So I'll have that for dinner, wake up in the morning, probably get a real early start because I don't have much to do. I'm not going to have a campfire here, that's for sure. I'm just going to listen to an audiobook, eat my dinner, lounge in this baby. All right. <sighs> Man, I'm hungry. All this talk about food. <sighs> Five thirty in the morning. I actually set my well, let me get my flashlight out of the way here. 
I actually set my alarm for six o'clock, but um, well, sunrise is 5:20, and uh, I just kind of naturally woke up. So that works. Plan to get on the trail pretty early today, anyway. So I might might sit here for a couple more minutes, but I think I'm gonna get up and at them. Slept great in the uh, hammock here. My hang angle is a, it's a little, uh, could have used a little work. It's mostly because of the, the um, width between trees I had, but uh, still feeling pretty good. I slept amazing, quite comfortable. I do love this hammock, but yeah, it uh, it's only like 54 degrees. I don't even think it cracked into the uh, 40s last night. So I ended up actually being plenty warm. I took off my long sleeve shirt that I was originally intending to sleep in. Just use it as a pillow instead and just put a buff over my head just to keep a little heat up top since the quilt doesn't have a hood on it. Actually, you can see my little sit pad is still hanging up there. Uh, I usually put that in the foot pad of my quilt to uh, keep my feet warm, but didn't even need that last night. I'm feeling pretty good right now. I did actually, ironically, don't ask me how, but I had dinner and kind of just listened to the birds and then an audio book and podcast and the next thing I knew it was like 11 o'clock by the time I actually was going to bed um so I probably fell asleep a little after 11 so I still got six ish hours of sleep I guess I'm a bit of a night owl um but yeah regardless I'm still feeling pretty good so I'm probably just gonna pack up real quick I'm gonna go get some water um, refill on that although I'm gambling the water is back down the trail we got to go up the trail to get back where we're going um, I did see some trickles of water coming down the trail some trickles um, so I'm gambling on maybe just picking that up on the way out instead of backtracking to get water we'll see how that plays out you know ironically last night I set my beacon up on the ridge line here so I could find my way, way back to camp. I made sure to take my GPS with me, all that. And I get down there as I'm like pretty much to the water down there where it's flowing pretty good. And I realized I didn't bring with me <laughs> my headlamp or even a cell phone. So that was ironic. But luckily I had plenty of civil uh, twilight left. Uh, it was no problem to see what I was doing to fill up and get back to camp. So. Made it back, went to uh, bed eventually, and here I am. So, never ended up raining, which is good. Uh, always nice to pack up a dry tarp. So that'll be convenient and quick. And uh, other than that, I'll just go get my food bag from down over there, my bear bag. And uh, maybe grab a Pop-Tart, pack up, and go. Get my shoes on here. I got them underneath in my bag. There are some slugs around here, and sure enough, <laughs> there's one on my shoe right there. So let's hope there's none inside. Eh, doesn't feel like it. <sighs> you can get a better look now at where I'm camping. I mean, it's about as wild as it gets right there. It is dense back here. I'm pretty much just off the trail in the <laughs> middle of nowhere, but cool mossy area. Bear bag down there. So break this tarp down, then the hammock, the quilts, pack it up, and uh, we'll get back on it. Well, I decided to not risk it with the stream on the trail up there. It was running pretty slow, and honestly, I'm probably saving more time just by coming down here and filling up quicker. Uh, I'm just going to fill up my full one and a half liters, because once we hit this ridge, it's going to be dry. And I need to stay on top of the hydration, that is for sure, today. There we go, this is flowing pretty good. Nice and fast. But uh, I, I managed last night to pull in a 
signal on my weather band radio, which is not that hard around here because it broadcasts right from the top of Washington. They have a tower there. And should be all sunny today and tomorrow. So that's awesome. Um, but if, that, if I don't have any cloud cover, then uh, I might actually need some sunscreen today. And I'll probably be sweating, especially in the presidentials. Tomorrow will probably be the most above tree line, but substantial today because we got to get all the way up on top of Washington. Ooh, today's flavor is s'mores. That's the fun thing about Pop Tarts in the foil. Uh, once you pack them, you don't know which flavor is which. I mean, I guess you could write on it with a marker, but what fun is that? This is going to be fueled up, and we'll get back at it. go up <laughs> wish I could move that fast I'm feeling pretty good though didn't bother with taking the time to make coffee just uh had a couple caffeine pills that I keep in my first aid kit. Not that it's necessarily first aid, but it's just always had a little portion of them in there for times like this where I need a little, a little simulated coffee without taking the time to cook it. Straight up, as expected. <sighs> Huts over there. I think we probably camped somewhere right down in there. Yeah, that was our home for tonight. All right, so first up is Wildcat A. And there's a series of Wildcats. A, B, C, D. I believe there's an E too. Like, so as you can imagine, that would explain the up and down, up and down, up and down. Speaking of which, I'm going the wrong way here. <laughs> That's a rock slide, not the trail. Thank God I don't have to go up that. But yeah, I found this to be one of the more fatiguing trails in the whites. Now, I've only done it once before and it was on that first Prescott Loop attempt. And uh, I night hiked it. I didn't even get up it until sunset or so. So it'll be nice to see it in the daylight. I can't believe I did this with a headlamp the first time. Especially going down some of this stuff. Just thinking of how I felt yesterday at the end. But yeah, it's nice to be able to see. Have some sunlight. All right, well, we racked out like 1,400 feet of gain in less than a mile, a little less than a mile. And uh, now we're real close to the summit of Wildcat A. And this is nice because when you get to these summits, they're nice and flat and compared to going up a wall of rock, it feels pretty good. But at this point, we are around 4,400 feet. So we're on top of that, uh, <laughs> Believe it or not, that big rock face that we saw yesterday. Cobwebs everywhere. <sighs> so that feels pretty good. Now, the rest of these up and downs I was talking about, they're not going to be as severe as what I just did. That's the main push. Now we just go up, you know, in the several hundreds of feet or something like that in between peaks, I believe. But not in the thousands, which is nice. So, for each peak, we get to enjoy 
some mossy I'm even going to call this flat compared to that other stuff some mossy flatness and little views peeking out through the trees here there are you can see little spur trails around here and there are opportunities to camp up here the only downside is that there's not going to be any water unless you were like really dying and you were lucky enough to find a puddle like that but that's why I didn't come up here last night but it is a possibility if you plan ahead so let's check this view out view and then we'll duck back in there and keep going through maybe we can see the wall that we climbed up yesterday oh yeah yep there it is so now we're on the opposite side that dizzying look down again hut from the other side the pond where we camped somewhere in there mountains we came across yesterday and uh yeah we went down that last night so i guess it wasn't too bad to go down that in 26 minutes considering my legs are about to fall off <sighs> some more mountains over there and uh just head back into the woods and make our way across these wildcats made it to D pretty severe uphill getting from uh, C to D lost a lot of elevation and came pretty much straight up over there but technically I think the summit's a couple hundred feet over here but a little view looking back over there and once we drop down off a of D uh, it should be wildcat the top of the wildcat uh, ski mountain <laughs> actually it's right there even though I knew it was coming up there's nothing like seeing something man-made all of a sudden and you've been out here like this kind of jarring nothing compared to when we go up Washington <laughs> wait do you see that for jarring I think it's maybe an observation deck they have and then over here should be the ski lift let's go take a look yep well we're certainly closer to it than we were yesterday huh and there's still no clouds on it it'd be really awesome if it holds out it's uh, clouded in more often than not so I'll be lucky and happy if I get up there and still got some clear skies on it all right back down the man-made stairs back onto the rocks and dirt oh yeah we are just about to check off the Carter Wildcat portion of this hike. That's side one. There's side two. Jeep is up there somewhere. So we're just going to drop down in there. And then we've got a decision to make. I'll get into that when we get down there. But over here, going up there, there's Pinkham Notch visitor center the famous tuckerman ravine trail snakes up there beautiful hike super popular there's also huntington ravine which is a little more uh, difficult some say many say the most difficult hike in the whites uh you and i i believe they suggest not going down it only up it and then there's glen boulder trail that kind of snakes around the outside here you know another kind of funny thing that occurred as i was wrapping up the uh wildcats here they don't get recognized too often it happens occasionally but not that often but i ran into uh, another hiker shout out to dan and uh he recognized me from the channel seemed like a cool dude and uh, said he was getting back into backpacking after a bit of a hiatus um and he definitely jumped back into it he said he did a winter ascent of mount washington in march and uh today he's going down to uh, carter notch and whatnot so Hey Dan, it was nice to meet you. Even funnier than that 
is no joke like 10 minutes later um i'm hiking along we i get to a kind of gnarly spot there's a through hiker coming down so i stop to let him get down so there's not a traffic jam and <laughs> he tells me say hi to uh sarah and denali so <laughs> uh shout out to sparky as well who is doing the whole through hike he actually started in february in winter pretty cool he's up here to the presidentials which means that he's almost done he's just got to get up to maine and Katahdin, mount katahdin and he's going to wrap it up so nice to meet you as well sparky and um really awesome that you're doing the through hike of the appalachian trail all right now if i remember correctly this is a pretty exposed section right here which gives you good views but you want to pay attention to your footing, so I'll probably be doing that. <sighs> yep, that is the trail. Not gonna lie. This is probably some of the most severe downhill I've done. Uh, so, going from this direction, at least for sure on this loop, this is the most intense. Uh, definitely some butt scooting going on not taking any risks with that but luckily i do hear some cars in the distance and from looking at the elevation we're getting close to uh flatland and then a lot of uphill but to be honest kind of looking forward to that right now kind of done with the downhill for today at least a little more careful footing and uh hopefully we'll see some flat trail and a trail junction before we know it Whew. that was brutal. I don't know personally what it's like to be on an airplane that they tell you is going to crash and then what it feels like to actually land safely on the ground, but that's pretty much the best analogy I can come up with right now. Going up it, definitely more physically strenuous. Going down it, very mentally and psychologically strenuous. There are some uh, sketchy spots. I would not recommend going up that or, or down that if you're afraid of heights and if you're newer to hiking i would say don't go down it until you've done a couple other trails huh. but i'm here now and we are at that choice so you can see the lost pond trail is this way that's the actual at continues over there and pinkle notch visitor center is one mile that way so you could go that way and if you go up there um at the visitor centers that Tuckerman Ravine Trail. I'd say if you're here in the off season or you've never done that trail before, go for it. You can do the same loop by going up there instead. The mileage and the elevation gain and all that stuff will be pretty much the same. Personally, I'm going to avoid it because it is the middle of the week, but it's still, you know, kind of peak sort, uh, tourist season. So it's going to be jammed even for a weekday. I know it will be. Um, and I've done it before. So in my case, I haven't done the Glen Boulder Trail, which is this way. We're going to link up a Route 16, just a tenth of a mile. There's a trailhead on the other side of the road. That's the one that I said kind of goes off to the side. It's still a ton of exposure. It's supposed to be really cool. And I've never done it before. And ultimately, it's going to take us to Mount Washington via Boot Spur, which is a little sub peak and should be fun. At this point, it's 12-12. So my uh dreams of a lunch at the snack shop up top of mount washington um it's probably gonna be a late lunch or dinner possibly depending how badly i get beaten because we are all the way back to our starting elevation same as when we started at the jeep so now we don't have to get to 4500 feet we got to get to 6280 something feet <sighs> well, we'll get there
Oh good. 3,400 feet to go. Okay. Okay. Whew. There's Glen Boulder in the distance. Where we came from. Oh man. I am beat up. Feeling it, but I've been looking forward to getting out of the trees. We're going back into a little pocket here, but at least we popped up out of it. And uh, we'll probably be in and out of this scrub for a little bit, but pretty soon we'll be fully above and that'll be a little mental boost for me. Uh, see what we got here. Well, there it is. Glen Boulder. Let's get a better look at it here. That's a boulder, all right. Typically, I would be tempted to call this a glacial erratic. But then I looked into it, and apparently it's not a glacial erratic because it's apparently the same composition as the rocks around it. And a true glacial erratic means a rock that is not indigenous to the region was picked up a long, long time ago by a glacier, moved along, eventually the glacier melts, and you have this weird non-native rock or boulder left behind. So they say this isn't a glacial erratic. Still don't know if it was put there by a glacier or not or tumble down the hill i don't know but that's why they call this the glen boulder trail <sighs> now we just gotta continue along we're up to uh oh i don't know i'm not even gonna look at how many feet i have to go a while i've been purposely saving this little boost here for today on the presidentials so early, but uh, some Sour Patch Kids watermelon slices. Normally, I'd say I avoid carbs the majority of the time. I avoid sugar almost all the time. But uh, on a day like today, don't come between me and my Sour Patch Kids. I think I need it. It's making me feel a little better about the thought that's been creeping in because it's now 2.46. I'm dragging a bit. It's also pretty tough terrain. But uh, the thought is dawning and creeping in that, uh, yeah, this will be a night hike because I'm at 4,000 feet. I got another 2.2K to go. And I got to drop down off of Washington. So I think I'll get over the summit before nightfall for sure. <clears throat> but I'll probably be in the woods, probably right around the time I get into the woods. It'll be dark. I'm just, from personal experience, I'm thinking that's where this is going. So, that's fine. As long as I, uh, long as I get there. But, I'm just sitting here having my snack. I ate some ramen noodles. I didn't want to spend time cooking them, so I ate them raw. And I'm just staring over there. And looking in wonderment, you see that white dot down there? That is the top of the ski slope. You can actually see the skis, the trails going down there. And uh, that rock slide looking monstrosity there is what we came down today. That gave me a little bit of anxiety. Looking at it from here kind of makes sense. That is pretty crazy. And we dropped across the road there. We managed to get up here. So, yeah, I'm going to soak it in a little more. I don't want to waste too much time, but I think psychologically and physically I need to take a little break. So I'm probably going to sit for another 10 minutes. And uh, that'll bring me to 3 o'clock, and then I gotta hustle, that is for sure. But for now, I'll just stare at my previous accomplishments and get a little sugar rush. Getting a little tight. We're back into the trees. <sighs> Giving me a little break from the wind. It got uh, starting to get a little... A little 
wouldn't call it dicey, but it was getting windy out there. And there's some clouds rolling in from both directions. So, I don't know what Washington's gonna look like up top. I'm just gonna have to wait and see what it's like when I pop out of these trees. That's the summit of Gulf Peak, AKA Slide Peak, I believe they also call it. There's all the crumults that we came out of, which is basically just battered down trees that because of the conditions and wind and a combination of things just can't grow any taller than that. And then you take it to another extreme and there's nothing at all. Sorry about the wind, the way it is. Um, so we're now gonna curl around here. We gotta make ourselves up there. And I, I'm assuming that's Bootspur. That is not Washington. Washington's on the other side. But, at least I got a good view, so it's putting a little pep in my step, along with the, uh, you know, Sour Patch Kids. Definitely no more trees from here on out. On the surface of the moon. <laughs> if they had grass on the moon, I guess. It's about all that's growing here. See what's on the other side of this boot spur. Well, there's what I've been looking for. This way. There it is. About as close as we've been. And the long cutoff seems to be my most direct route there. Also seems to unfortunately dip down a little bit and go back up, but I'm just gonna take the most direct route I can at this point. clouds. Luckily they're above it, which is nice. We'll see if it holds out. Uh, 439.6 miles, 1,000 feet to go. further. I don't know if this is the official route, but I'm taking it. Oh, there's a cairn, so that's good. Maybe a dozen or two more of these and we just might finally be up there. Weird, right? <laughs> Pretty weird. <sighs> Only one thing left to do now. Egg salad it is. No chili dog, but it'll work. crowd getting their pictures over there. We got my long sleeve on, it's cold. We're gonna take Trinity Heights connector ultimately towards the Northside Trail. So, we got like a couple miles, two point something probably. Uh, once I get to the Sphinx Trail, it'll be one mile on that, roughly. 5.52, time flies when you're eating egg salad. Didn't get my chili dog, that's okay. I guess it'll just make my tomorrow that much better. Time to uh, give all, well, some of that elevation back. A lot better going down though. That's a lot easier approach over here. That was brutal on the other side. See how small that little section is compared to what we did? And now this is actually kind of like real trail. So I think that might have been the toughest approach I've done to Washington coming up. Way I just did on that connector. I mean the um, lawn cutoff and whatnot. But 
<sighs> it is dawning on me now as I leave the summit of Washington behind me that I didn't really give you much of a tour up there. I apologize. I didn't really even think of it until I, well, just now. I guess besides the obvious time crunch, I think the real factor was it, it could be a bit jarring to suddenly be up there. Um, you know, in the middle of a, of a hike like this, especially a solo hike. So I just kind of grab my, grab my food, wash my hands with some real hot water, and rolled. Just got to get over that hump and drop down in there find ourselves some camp. Try not to get hit by the train. Alright, I'm at another uh, decision point, let's call it right now. There's one thing I did, in addition to not completing the end of it, on my previous Prescott loop attempt. When I planned it out, I really thought that Mount Clay should be on it. It's part of the presidentials, and it offers a view down into where we're going to camp tonight. But when I did it the first time, there is an option to go around it, which is this trail over here. And I took that. And that always kind of stood out to me. Now, of course, I didn't complete the loop anyway, but I'm gonna do something against my better judgment right now. Um, as the, the hours tick down, 6.30. Uh, it is slow on these rocks. I'm probably just tired too. Mount Clay Loop Trail goes over to Summit and it goes over there. It's not terrible, but to be honest, if I was giving anybody advice right now, I would say, considering your situation and your late to camp, go around it, but um, I just want to lay this loop to rest, and um, I don't want to have any doubts, assuming that I actually complete it this time, so I'm going to suck it up and go over this thing. What that means, though, my fate is uh, pretty, pretty solid now. There will be night hiking in my future. I don't see how there won't be, but I just want to, want to check this loop off. All right then, let's get on top of this thing. All right. Yep, that's the top. It's like 10 minutes on the dot. Well worth it. Well worth it. If I had to be perfectly honest, Pretty similar view to what I had over there, but it's different. I can see further in there, but yeah, that wasn't bad. And the mileage is about the same, so the only difference was a couple hundred feet elevation gain. Back over here, though, check that out. I like that, that's cool. Not bad at all. All right, now I just got to drop down off of this thing, go over a couple humps. Oh, wait a minute. Is that actually the summit? And now we did it. Just, uh, we'll keep that between us. I was a little silly, but I realized, there's a little summit pin there, that, uh, there's my proof. I realized I couldn't see Mount Jefferson, which we are thankfully doing tomorrow. And then, uh, I realized it probably shouldn't have taken 10 minutes. But I'm here now. Now I will descend. Descend. Oh boy. Well, I'm finally where I wanted to be. A mile down on the Sphinx Trail. It's uh it's after nine, but I got all my stuff set up. Hammock. I know you can barely see it. Got my spot messenger over there. Sent him message to my wife, let her know where I camp, got my tarp ready to go, hammocks up, insulation, over here I got the uh, cook kit, so I used that, heated up some water, water's over there, uh, this should be about ready, I'm 
rehydrating my meal, I usually use this foam sit pad as a um, insulating device. So I got my chicken teriyaki there. Going to eat that shortly. And uh, then hop in bed. Try to get to bed earlier than 11 today. Hopefully. Hopefully I'm not blinding you as well. But uh, yeah, it's been a rough day. A lot of ups and downs. Literally. Elevation wise and mentally. But uh, for now, it's meal, lounge, sleep. Well, we made it to the third and final day. It's like 5 a.m. Just kind of naturally woke up. Sunrise is actually 520, but didn't even put the tarp out last night. Got a weather report on my radio. Uh, said it was all clear again. The skies were super clear, as you can see. I actually have a nice patch, an open patch right there, which was quite nice. The stars were awesome last night. So I was able to stare right up at that. I kind of took the gamble and um, it didn't uh, didn't rain on me. But I have my tent spikes underneath of me along with my pack down there. And uh, I was ready to deploy the tarp real quickly if I had to with that uh, snake skin. It's pretty quick to get out. But <sighs> another good night's sleep. But it's going to be another... Um, pretty tough day so I'm gonna pretty much just pack up and roll get on the trail and uh, get towards those presidentials and my favorite peak we'll be hitting today Mount Adams second highest in the White Mountain after uh, Mount Washington of course only this one has no road up top and uh, spectacular views so I'm gonna pack up real quick and uh, backtrack up the Sphinx Trail, and we'll start this day. All right, so here's the intersection. You can see no camping within a quarter mile of Great Gulf Trail beyond this point. <clears throat> So we were right at it. I was over there, and that's where my campsite was. And uh, I did not see this sign last night. I'm gonna go towards Mount Washington, of course. I didn't see that sign last night because um, I ended up hiking off the trail at some point. This trail dodges across the, the, uh, the water there, back and forth many times. And at some point I came off and uh, I was like, I think I'm on like a herd path for like an animal trail or something. And sure enough, um, I was I was way off the trail, um, but I was pretty deep in at that point. So I ended up luckily having that campsite saved from a previous trip on my GPS. Saw it was 300 feet away. Tried to bushwhack through some tremendous stuff for like. Uh, I want to say 100 feet out of the 300 feet that it said it was away and it was just too much so then I had to just follow the river and uh, it was pitch black <laughs> it was it was it was fun but if it wasn't for that GPS waypoint I think I would have been in trouble um, which way am I going here oops it's apparently too early in the morning for me let me check this sign again <laughs> Yeah, I know that didn't feel right. We are done with Mount Washington. Sphinx Trail, Gulf Side, up here. Like I said, <laughs> you follow the uh, you follow the river, not go away from it. So back up the trail we go. And there's a cairn on each side. Yeah, I, I definitely don't remember crossing this at any point. So I, at this point, I was bushwhacking. Maybe this is where I lost it over here. And uh, it is dense over there. Don't recommend that. Uh. Okay. As you can see, it's a pretty rough trail. It's 
back in 2011, Hurricane Irene really tore parts of this trail out. This is my third time down here. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely changed over the years. Nature is just kind of doing what it does. Pretty neat. Now I would be uh, irresponsible if I didn't point this out, so I want to do that now. I definitely do not recommend that um, anyone hikes this trail at night, especially got, especially not going down like I did. Um, the only thing I had going to my favor was I had a, enough civil twilight that it wasn't pitch black until I was like maybe two thirds of the way down past some of this stuff. Um, I had done it twice before, so I kind of knew what I was looking for. Um, and I had GPS data to back me up. But even with all those, I still, um, hold on. <laughs> I still lost the trail on several occasions, especially at the end. I would say if you're in a similar situation, without those factors or the full hardiness like me. Just, um, I would have dipped it, I would say dip down Jewel Trail. I've never been down that trail, but I hear there are some options down there that are legal. There's only like two of them, little pockets. But if the conditions are right, it is cool to come down here. It's a beautiful, but very rugged trail. It's not blazed at all. Uh, most of it follows a stream bed that's very steep. It's almost like hiking down a waterfall a lot of times and you crisscross the water a lot. So it's very easy to lose it. But uh, the other downside is I dropped all the way down to like the mid 3000s, maybe 3,500 feet. And uh, so I'm gonna have to get all that back. But these are all the places I paid for some pretty beautiful trail, but can't say I would recommend doing it at night like that. <laughs> ah. Whew. Remember what I said about it's like hiking up a waterfall? Well, I'll also point out something called complacency. I was just thinking to myself, and it's true, this is way easier going up, even though it's more strenuous muscle wise than it is going down just because you got handholds in front of you it's going way quicker but overconfidence within like a minute of that thought i stepped on a mossy rock slipped fell right there luckily i didn't hit my head on the back of that back of my head on that rock there caught myself with the palm of my hand here <sighs> and i'm starting to feel like i scratched my leg yeah, a little bit. I don't know. I got adrenaline now, so I have no idea if I'm actually injured or not, but <sighs> compared to my injury last time, I'm good. Knock on <clears throat> wood. But yeah, be careful with this trail and don't underestimate it because you're literally walking in a very steep stream for about 50% of it. Okay. Slow and steady wins the race, I suppose. The sun is out and we are out of the wet area. <sighs> Made it without any more falls. There's two spots though on the way out. They're worse on the way down as well. But I think this is the one I have to take my pack off for. Yeah, it's just not worth it. Especially because these, <laughs> these footholds are decent, but they go out a little bit. For you rock climbers, it's nothing. But for me, it's something. So I usually take my pack off and put it right there what I did last night as well <sighs> and then uh, climb straight up it and, all right. almost there all right we're back down through that little chute there is 
Spakes Trail where, where we camped. There's our fickle friend, Mount Clay, that we've descended yesterday. And this direction is Mount Jefferson. So today's gonna be Jefferson, and down, then up to Adams, and down, then up to Madison, and then we'll make our way down Gulf Trail, and ultimately back to the Jeep and flame broil goodness. So you could go straight ahead to Madison, but we're gonna take this uh, Jefferson Loop Lover's Summit Trail and uh, skip to the top of this guy. Sun's definitely out, like I said. I uh, feel okay after my slip, slip in the, uh, on the trail, Sphinx Trail back there. The only casualty so far on this trip actually seems to be uh, my sunglasses got broken at some point, but that's okay. I got a little tiny, tiny, tiny tube of super glue that I always keep in my first aid kit, and uh, I guess I'm finally going to need it. All right. Here we go. I know what that sound was. Guess I should have super glued it right away. Nonetheless, first summit is down. <sighs> Jefferson's always struck me as an odd kind of summit. It's flat in the middle with these four kind of mounds, one of which I'm sitting on. But it kind of makes me wonder how really think about that is how these were formed. I mean, it's just a ton of small boulders. How they ended up in this shape. Glaciers and stuff, I guess, ultimately. But it is interesting. Whew, clouds are coming in, too. I think I got here just in time for a view. Alright. We're going to head down this way. Into the clouds. Oh, man. These little tiny rocks. Relatively tiny compared to the ones we're going to get on Adams. They are quite a chore to go down. <sighs> kind of looking forward to that, going up that path there. Probably not going to say it when I get there, but anything other than this would be quite welcome right now. Oh yeah. Much better. some voices then I looked up and there's our next goal oh, it's hard to envision the fact that I'm actually gonna get up there somehow but next thing you know somehow I will be up here look at that Mount Washington behind us again and this is it the summit of Mount Adams second tallest in the White Mountains you can tell he's got a slight edge on us, but not too much. Now, what he doesn't have is a road or chili dogs. So it really depends on how you look at it. But this is great. And we're looking down here. That's King Ravine down in there. Pretty, pretty much a wind tunnel every time I've gone by it. That's Star Lake over there. And speaking of Star Lake, from here you can either take the airline trail, which I believe should be that guy right there. Yep, airline. Which is what I've taken every other, the two other times I've come up Adams. But I'm going to switch it up. The um, Star Lake trail right there apparently goes over the edge here somewhere. Goes towards, you guessed it, Star Lake. And they both end up, airline or Star Lake, at Madison Hut and ultimately Madison, which is that hump right there. That's gonna be our last peak, and then we're gonna snake our way down and back to the Jeep. So, one more summit to go out of nine majors and seven minors, something like that. Not bad. Weather's holding out too, beautiful day. All right. Soak it in one more time. 
because this is probably the best view we're going to get. Although Madison's pretty good too. You can tell over there from the top of it that uh, you got some 360 degree views off of that guy for sure. Just hit 11 o'clock or so, so I think we're doing all right on time. Let's get back on it. Oh, okay. I may be misremembering airline. It is a tough one, but the airline trail compared to the Star Lake trail, this is steep. I can't imagine going up this. Well, then again, like I said before, sometimes going down is worse, but we'll get there one foot at a time. Just keep thinking about burgers. And there's definitely some butt scooting in my future. No shame. <sighs> Oh my, Star Lake Trail, what do I say, where do I begin? I'll put it like this, I was working my way down, there's a nice glimpse of it. Don't see a trail, it's because there isn't really one, it's just choose your own adventure with the rocks, kind of, loose rocks. And I was thinking to myself, yeah, if I ever did this loop again, I would definitely be doing airline. This is probably my last time on Star Lake Trail. And then I started thinking, maybe this is just the effects of my third day of hiking that's making me feel this way. But really, just then I was stopping to get some water. A gentleman who looked much more experienced at hiking than me comes up behind me. And instead of the customary hello or how you doing, unprompted simply says, I won't do that trail again. Uh, I said, yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. So we both agreed uh, airline is pr probably the ticket in the future for Adams, um, especially if I ever did this loop again. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. If you're uh, gonna do this loop, be prepared for some serious uh, demoralization if you come down Star Lake Trail. I should also point out he had hiking poles trekking sticks, whatever you want to call them, with him. Which, unless you're an idiot like me who's overly concerned with filming, I would highly recommend in this area. They come in very useful. I had to use my hands the whole way down. <sighs> anyway, this is Star Lake, apparently. There's Madison, which is insult to injury. The whole time you're coming down that, thinking, why did I do this? That is staring at you, taunting you. That's just... Uh, Let's just hope I can hang in there for one more summit because I think Star Lake almost broke me. Goodbye Adams, goodbye Madison Hut. Probably a quarter of a mile now. Oh. A couple more steps to go. I'm going to follow the AT a little bit more. You can actually see some civilization over there. Now that we're on this side of the range. <sighs> uh, I guess that's fitting. Civilization is in my immediate future today. Alright. Intersection with Daniel Webster Scout Trail. Dolly Cop Campground three and a half miles that way. So if I had parked down there at the campground like I did in previous years, down there, uh, that's what I would take right now. But didn't want to do that two mile road hike. So I'm gonna go straight 
towards Route 16 parking. I think that might be referring to me. Osgood cutoff is definitely my intersection I'm looking for. So some more rock scrambles, that is for sure. But a handful more miles and should be back into the woods, maybe on some more um, forgiving trails. Cause I'll tell you the truth, my feet are on fire right now. And I haven't had that problem in a while, but these are, this is the first time I've hiked in these new shoes. My, um, it's just a new pair of the same shoes I was using before, the Terex Swifts by Adidas. But yeah, I don't know. They are hurting today. Every step's a little painful. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm hiking slow today. It's uh, it's 1.30 or so. <sighs> so I just uh, hope I can get down there in time because I am way too smelly probably to uh, walk into Delaney's off the street. So I'm thinking check into the hotel, shower, and then head over there. I think they close at 9.30. So hopefully I can pull that off. Till then, hike on. Hike on. Hike on. I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day. Cause like, for an hour now, uh, this is all I see. But I have been hiking. It just seems like it keeps happening over and over again. But when I turn around, which I haven't done in a while out of sheer focus, it makes sense. This is what I've been doing all day. Well, not all day, but it feels like it. So we came off of there, obviously. And then it's this this and this and they all look like that and every time you think it's the last one there's another one on the other side i could look at my topo map but i, I just don't even i don't have the energy to take it out I, actually i just don't want to know i really hope this is the last one I don't. I don't. oh Finally looks a little different. Oh, well. A few rounds of Groundhog Day later, and we finally drop down out of the trees. Haven't escaped all the rocks, but there is a nice healthy mix of dirt, which feels a lot better on my feet. Also feels pretty good to be out of the sun. Used up almost all my sunscreen. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was baking today. I mean, it was a beautiful day, but no cloud cover to block that sun really at all. So we're getting there now. I'd say home stretch. I mean, I can even hear some road noise in the distance. You can see kind of how we line up with the ski uh, slopes over there. So we're definitely getting down in elevation, back down the baseline. Should flatten out before you know it. And then uh, the remaining mile or two should melt off pretty quick. Made it back to the parking lot. I see the Jeep up ahead. So I think that means finally did it. Finally completed the Prez Cat loop after my third attempt. No skip sections, no substantial injuries. I'd say pretty much in terms of time frame to terrain ratio, probably the most intense trip, non winter trip. That I've ever done but I had a good time and uh, now I'm ready to get cleaned up it's 4 30 I got plenty of time for a little Delaney's and uh, yeah that about wraps it up so until next time I'm Syntax 77 and right now it's cheeseburger time <laughs>